Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 9th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Next frontal system up, Pacific Northwest to the upper right, Hawaiian Islands bottom left, warm, moist, southwest flow, atmospheric river activity back up into the region, and we'll take a look at that in some detail, and we'll take a look at the extended forecast as we always do as we go through the video here this morning. I mentioned the Tempest Weather Station a lot, but this is a great way to view the weather station if you just want to kind of put one of these in your living room or wherever you want to put it in your kitchen. Uh, I just ordered one of these so I get to test it out here as well. And also these wind meters, Tempest tells these also, these are very fun. I use these when I go out storm chasing. It gives you an instant reading on your smartphone and lets you save it, tells you your peak gust and all kinds of stuff. So you can click on that link down below to see more on those. Now Pacific Northwest Weather Watch is on Facebook as well. So you can share with your friends and family that use Facebook. Now sneaker wave threat, we consider that for Vancouver Island, Washington, Oregon coast. Hydrologic outlooks will likely be coming here over the next few days for some select locations with the atmospheric river rolling in. Portland National Weather Service calling attention to some air stagnation advisories and again the sneaker wave threat and this is going to kind of be a recurring thing. We're going to get some fog and some inversions likely developing as we go on in through next week. We got freezing fog advisories for places like Roseburg, there's Grants Pass, Medford, yeah so here we go, folks, starting to calm down the weather a little bit for some areas, but I'll show you where that precipitation is most likely to hit and how hard. So taking a look at 500 millibar heights, you can see that trough that we just dealt with, that is now becoming a thing of the past. There's the ridging starts to develop, but it is not going to be far enough west to stop the precipitation from really rolling into BC and portions of western Washington, maybe clipping some portions of Oregon also. And as we go on in through Saturday, Sunday, the atmospheric river continues to pour into the region and we continue on in towards next week. And you'll notice that ridging start to get a bit stronger there. Then that's going to block the storm track here. And we really start to warm up a lot. And we're probably going to create some inversions into places like the Columbia River, lower elevations, Willamette Valley, Puget Sound. So uh, uh, yeah, and it's going to be warm across some of the mountain areas. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. But if we look at the integrated vapor transport, you can clearly see this potent frontal system out over the Pacific Ocean. And we start to get a piece of that here across western BC as we go through the day Friday. We start to head off into Saturday morning. It's now impacting portions of western Washington. And it just kind of gets reinforced here as we go on in through the weekend with some rain heavy at times for some locations. But you can see it's mainly southwest BC and portions of Washington and just clipping uh, Oregon with uh, this upcoming round. And then we start to get warm as we build some ridging here across the West Coast of North America. At the very end of the six-day period, you can really see that ridge get developed all the way up towards Haida Gwaii. Now, looking at 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, and the freezing line is about that silver line there where it turns blue. That's where the zero Celsius line is. So watch as we go through the day today. You can kind of see us. This is about noon today. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, midnight tonight. We start to warm things up across a lot of Washington, Oregon for the higher terrains. So we're going to go above freezing for a lot of locations, and then you start to scroll off in towards Saturday, Sunday. There's Monday, there's Tuesday. You can see we're going to spend a lot of time with some very warm conditions across the higher terrain. This is not going to be favorable for our high elevation snow that we just received. Now, taking a look at this precipitation, it starts to arrive into western BC. Again, as we're going through the day on Friday, there's Saturday morning. Here we go on at the day Saturday. It starts to come across western Washington. And as we go through Sunday morning, you see it coming across some portions like Seattle and some of the North Cascades. Now, this snow is going to be a pretty high elevation. As I just showed you, those freezing levels are pretty downright high. So that's not going to be good for a lot of the ski areas. And you see that precipitation, you know, very warm, high freezing levels as we go on in through Monday. Then the atmospheric river finally lifts northbound there and we start to get a bit of a break as we go through next week. But again, we're going to be quite warm aloft and big ridging across the Pacific Northwest. Now, 24-hour running totals. I'll scroll through this and you can see Seattle, by the time you get towards Monday morning, you're looking at up over an inch in the 24-hour period. Much less for Portland, Salem, Eugene, down in some portions of Oregon, really not getting much precipitation at all from this atmospheric river. But you can also see some pretty heavy amounts across the North Cascades, South Southwest BC, Vancouver Island, and some of the Olympic Mountains there. So we are going to have some potential flood concerns, especially with the snowmelt that will be occurring at the same time as this rainfall rolling in. 
And then after that, it looks like we might dry out for a bit. And we'll show you the extent of forecast here at the end of the video. Also, some breezy winds, mainly across places like uh, southwest BC, northwest Washington interior, and some of the northwest Washington coastline over the next few days. No major windstorm or anything. We can kind of see that on very early Monday morning, late Sunday night. We really start to pick up the winds across some of the northwest interior there. But again, nothing too extreme. Uh, looking at wind gusts, I'll scroll through the 68 period. You can kind of see that, you know, every northward, actually, as we go through the day, on Monday. Might get some decent gusts up across, uh, like I mentioned, the northwest interior, perhaps gusting up over 50 miles per hour. Again, there's Quileute right there, La Push, some gusty winds as well. But to see not much for Seattle, Portland, you know, places of the eastern Oregon, eastern Washington, not looking very windy here over the next six days. And also the sneaker wave threat will be high. You can kind of see that off and on over the next few days. So just kind of consider that if you're going out to the coastline. Now, looking at soundings for Quileute, this is 500 millibars or about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. Here is January right there. You can see once you get towards the uh, 580 dam line here, so you're looking at heights at 500 millibars, and once you get above 580, you're you know you're really on the maximum for this time of year. And you can see during the summertime, of course, we get some of these stronger ridges that do set up as we go through the summer months, but. Again, we're going to take a look at the heights, compare them there. So look at that 580 red line that's kind of moving through there. That's generally considered, I think that is, uh, that's not the daily max, but that's 75%, 75th percentile on the high end of things. And you can see some of these polar vortexes that have approached our region here in the past, also kind of showing up there as well. But we're going to be closer to the record highs. And if I show you that, the probability of looking at 576 equal to or greater than is quite high. I mean, the artificial intelligence says 90 to 100 percent chance of that ridge developing as we go through the next few days. So you can kind of see that developing here, the atmospheric river again on the western periphery of that, and then we build that ridge as we go on in towards uh, the next week and on in through the next week, and kind of keeping that ridge around for a while as we look way off into the forecast. We're 10 days out in the forecast, and you still that see that ridge kind of hanging out with us. So uh, this is looking at temperatures at 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet, and the 75th percentile is right there at about what? You're talking about 11 degrees Celsius and then maybe 10.8 here as we go through the month of January. And if I scroll through here, I've kind of already looked at it, and you can see as we go on in through the end of next week, look at some of these temperatures here. So we're going to be approaching some of the record maximum temperatures there at 5,000 feet for some portions of the Pacific Northwest. And you can clearly see how we're just way above freezing at 5,000 feet across the region as we go on into the next 10 days or so. Just absolutely detrimental to our snowpack if that happens. And then even when you see this, this drops it down below freezing at 5,000. But a lot of those the ski areas like Stevens and Snoqualmie are at four and 3,000 feet. So that doesn't necessarily mean good things right away yet. But hopefully we start to get a pattern change at some point as we go through the next two weeks or it starts to show up in the models. I mean, throw us a bone, Mother Nature. So if we take a look here at two meter temperature anomaly, and you can clearly see these above normal temperatures. Then we go towards Monday morning. I mean, look at this ridiculousness. You're up over 10, you're towards 15 degrees above normal across some of the Washington Cascades. BC even more dramatic there. And in fact, I should just bounce this out to the Northwest. We can see a little bit wider, but look at some of these temperatures. My goodness. These are two meter temperature anomalies. This is at the surface here where we measure. This is like six feet off the ground. And then we go on in through Tuesday afternoon. And then we go through Wednesday afternoon. You can kind of see these warm temperatures hanging out. And you're like, oh, look at that. We dropped back down. That's an inversion. You're trapped in fog here. And the mountains are still above freezing. And that's going to, again, continue to impact the snowpack across the higher train. And you can see as I scroll through daily here, kind of the foggy setup, it looks like it might start to show up as we go towards the mid and head and portions of next week. Again, we'll watch that. But Matt, look at that pattern. Just kind of remain with us. No cold air in sight through the two week period. And if we take a look at daily two meter maximum temperatures here, so there we go. This is for Friday, there's Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You can see some mid 50 showing out there. Look at the Southwest Oregon coast, maybe pushing up towards 60. Even east of the mountains, look at that. And some of the lower elevations, you're getting into the mid 50s. Maybe I'll do a dust double chase, kidding. But there we go for Tuesday. Look at that. Seattle may be approaching 60 degrees. So you may see some white pasty legs out there at Alki Beach. <laughs> kind of see how warm we get there as we go through next week. This is mid-January, you know, goodness. And then we go on into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You can kind of see these warm temperatures and these daily highs above freezing for a lot of our mountain areas all the way on in through January 19th. 
So the record high for that, the warmest day was, I think, 62 for Seattle back in 2005. So we may approach 60. We'll watch that, though, and we'll just kind of keep that in the back of our mind. We'll watch some of those other days to see if we are going to be dealing with some chilly temperatures. And you can see our all-time record low there for SeaTac on January 31st, 1950. Zero back, yeah, the, the, the ultimate Arctic outbreak. Nothing like that coming on the horizon just yet. But, I mean, maybe we'll get some cold air as we go on into February or something. We'll see how that goes. So if we look at 850 millibars, we're looking at the extended forecast here. This is an artificial intelligence. This is the ensemble mean. And as we scroll through the next few days, you can clearly see this warm air just engulfing a lot of the Pacific Northwest all the way up towards, you know, some of Southern Alaska there as we go up on and through next week that hangs out but then the only thing that kind of i'm hoping for is that we start to bring some of this colder air down and who knows maybe this ridge will develop differently as we go towards the end of the month and this will end up tapping some of this colder air back down into the region and start to help out our snowpack and maybe bring some lower elevation snowfall but again you know, it's such a long way out there. You're you're talking about over 10, 11 days off into the forecast. So again, we'll just watch that on a daily basis. This 8 to 14 day right now, this looks like it may be inversion based, you know, this below normal temperature. I wouldn't put too much into that yet. And the below normal signal for precipitation, the same time frame. Check out the Patreon page. I also released this video. I talk about La Nina or I put La Nina in quotes because we're in La Nina conditions, but just barely. And I think when all, everything is said and done, last winter season and this one are not going to be classified as La Ninas. They're almost certainly going to be classified as neutral years. We are not going to meet the criteria of the five three-month running totals for needed to classify it as a La Nina. So don't blame La Nina. It's probably actually just neutral conditions that we're in or a neutral year after all is said and done, even though we're technically across the equatorial Pacific into some of the the water temperatures that would tell you that you're at La Nina conditions, but it's not going to last long enough to be officially classified as such. So anyway, I'll stop rambling about that. Um, hope you guys are having a good day. We'll continue to break things down day by day, and I will catch you guys in the next forecast.